Coming at you live from beautiful DNHQ2 and also beautiful South Pasadena, California. This is the Blue Heaven Podcast. And hey, that sounds really, really loud. So we're going to go ahead and take care of that. What is going on, Dodgers Nation? My name is Clint. I don't know what camera I should be looking at, but you can find me as Real FRG. I'm just going to look in the middle on Twitter and Instagram. And looking at the middle camera, I can tell you that I am Brooke, and you can find me at BrookeMe3 on Twitter and Instagram. On today's show, we got some stuff. We got some stuff going on, bullpen related especially. Yeah, we got, well, one, we got some Rick, so let's, uh, the crowd goes wild for, for Richard. I, I just love saying that. Because I know it makes you slightly uncomfortable, even though it's, most things do, yeah. <laughs> this is why Rick is great. Uh, but yeah, we're talking about uh, Kenley, Kelly, and uh, we're going to, you know, it's a lack of relief, really. That's what we're going to go with. Uh, Yelly versus Belly, the MVP bloodbath. Defense, which is Pollock versus Verdugo. Mm -hmm. Uh, MLB trade season yet again, of course, but we've got to update our trade targets. And old Dodgers. Don't worry, we're not stealing your data. But, of course, first we have to give a shout-out to our partners, to our friends over at Sportscaster. At Sportscaster, you could be the star of your own show with built-in studio graphics and all that other fun stuff we get. You get access to special events, sound like a pro, look like a pro, look like Brooke. Look like Rick. You could you'd be Rick. That's a pro. <laughs> uh, so if you'd like to live stream, game, be your own broadcaster, go to sportscaster.com today. That is C-A-S-T-R.com. But, of course, after our stream. Please, after the stream. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Don't be Way rude. more important Don't than, be rude. than that, I would <clears throat> imagine. Don't forget, guys, this is a live stream. So make sure to drop some questions, concerns, uh, just general comments for us uh, wherever you're watching from. Let us know where you're representing Dodgers Nation. And uh, – what do we, I always say zip codes, but we don't do zip no, codes. Yeah. We do area codes, You, you tend guys. to mess up on the We zip know code. the area codes. We have no idea what the zip code is, so make sure you drop your area code. Or just tell me the city. Even better. I would appreciate that, guys. <laughs> appreciate that a lot. Uh, so, you might notice this guy sitting over here already. We already talked about him a little bit. Dodger stat man Rick Krajewski. Rick, you oh, just got back from... I have the bottom oh, ball. Sweet. Got back from a pretty big trip, right? Yeah, I was in Boston. Out of the All-Star break. That was fun. So Very cool. We got to see the monster. The monster. Is that what they call it? Yeah. He got to see J-Lo and the slow zoom in on the monster 47 times. I saw J-Lo, J-Lo. <laughs> the same way you guys did. I wasn't there Sunday, unfortunately, but yeah. But you mm. still saw that. Mm. That was that was a frustrating broadcast to me. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just, I just I have a lot of beef with it. So a lot of beef. Uh, we do have some people yeah, coming up uh, in, in the stream here. We got Brawley, California. We got Dallas, Oregon. We got Nerdy Dodger 714. Hi, Tati. Dallas, Oregon? Dallas, Oregon. Like, I, there's a city called apparently, Dallas Oregon? Grubbin Gunner says, what up, Rick? Oh, what's up? <laughs> and yeah. Benny says, goodbye. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> uh, we got Chris in the stream. says, Rick the man. Chris, Chris what? That, uh, just, that's what kind of literally what it he, says. Oh, because he can't say your last name. Oh, I, got, I, I can't yeah. say my last name. <laughs> yeah, good call on that We one. got 909. We got 760. We got <laughs> Perez 1619 saying, am I too late for the the weekly slander of Miami by Brooke? It'll come. It'll, he, be, it'll be there eventually. You know, I accidentally things. talk crap on Miami at least <laughs> once every podcast. Like the city or the so, team? I don't know. I think both. Okay. I think the team because I feel bad for the city. I think sure, that's what yeah. it is. And then uh, I was told that I shouldn't feel bad for the city because it's a good city, apparently. There's a lot going on. Not a big Miami guy, but I see it's yeah, just yeah, there's a lot the going on for but sure. Uh, it'll pop up eventually. It just slips out every now and again. Gail's in the stream says, "Hi friends, Kaka." C A C A like California. I know, California. I know, I know. But What's I read going it that on, way. Gail? We got Good Jack from Nebraska, famous Jack over there on the internet. Uh, Ray says, "Sup, Rick." We got Southgate in the house. We got a lot of stuff. We got questions going on. So let's let's get into the fun stuff. Of course, the Dodgers uh, lost an interesting game today. Uh, just generally was a weird series in Philly. You had, what, 40 rain delays, a full-on stop job I'm going to go with again, uh, plunkings and suspension, suspensions, and, of course, Hershizer on YouTube, which was awesome because he's just great at everything he does uh, when it comes to that kind of stuff. But um, apparently Matt Beatty is a dirty player now. Yeah. Per I sources. Mean, obviously, his personality is just that kind of guy. Yeah. Yeah, definitely yeah. can't trust him for yeah, anything. He's, he's a bad person. Like, he looked at somebody one time, you know, <laughs> he he returned napkins he it didn't was, use at a Taco Bell. It was just very unfortunate that he happened to do it right <clears throat> after Max Muncy had done it. Both yeah. on accident, both, you know, mm-hmm. innocent guys. Yeah, I mean, I don't think Max has ever hurt a human in his life. Most people feel, I would feel, <laughs> that uh, uh, Reese Hoskins is not the most smooth player at first base. So maybe he was slightly in the way. He looked less in the way, but still not stomp jobs, not 
at all intentional. Uh, some of the things that were intentional were some pitches uh, coming up and into a, a few Dodgers, and that's that's a lot. That's been a lot this season, Rick. You saw a couple over there in Boston. You saw the worst one in Boston. Uh, wait, you weren't there for that one. That's right. A Sunday, yeah. yeah. I still saw it. But yeah. Yeah, I mean, you saw it, but yeah. we're going to say you were there just because it makes <laughs> cool. me feel better. Because uh, you would have been there. You would have went and fixed that x-ray machine. I, I know it. I have I faith mean, in you. I haven't seen the x-ray machine, but I guess it's pretty old, so I don't know. Put that on the bucket list Old enough to time. miss a broken bone. So, like, not actually do the job that it's literally there to do. <laughs> that it's, that it's to it's literally not for. perform its yeah. function. I get so, that. So, Neris was suspended. He appealed. He pitched today. He earned a save and got mad at the Dodgers for actually letting him earn the save. Yeah, man. The, the nerve of some people. <laughs> I loved Muncie on this once again. Just basically his, uh, oh, I guess he earned a save for once against this. So it's just like the most Muncie jab like, that you can take yeah. to somebody, like not going after his personality at all, not going about anything about him, just being like, yeah, well, he got one finally. So good job. <laughs> I feel like he would have been pretty low on my list of like most quotable Dodgers when the season started. And like, right. Between that, like to get the ball out of the ocean thing. I mean, he's, he's, he's been he's on it. very entertaining. Yeah. yeah. That's where we're actually, we were bringing that up earlier in office, or some people were was bringing that up in office. Like, he doesn't seem like the type of, type of dude that fight. He seems like he's going to beat you with jabs like that. Yeah. yeah. Like the, the little cunning jabs. To the ones that are just like over your head because you're not smart enough for it. And <laughs> you're like, oh, crap. He got me on that one. I don't know if out of the ocean is necessarily smart enough because well, it wasn't an inaccurate statement <laughs> but uh i didn't i didn't pull up the poll but a lot of people so we we did put up a poll on dodgers nation uh, on the twitter about um i think also on facebook about you know do we want retaliation after the freeze hit by a pitch most people i think it was a little bit it was almost split but more, more people were like no let's not let you know like let's not mess with anything in that regard smartly but um you know no retaliation beat him with uh, kindness and home runs it's not really the Dodgers style either. It hasn't been for a while, mm-hmm. that kind of retaliation game. I, there's a lot of teams that are like that in baseball, and rightfully so. That's kind of part of the sport. But it seems like the Dodgers are just like a team so set on a mission that they're like, mm-hmm. we're not going to let that get in the way of what we're doing right now. They just seem like that team. So Walker Buehler, maybe, maybe not, maybe not so much. He seems like a guy who might uh, put a 97-mile-an-hour fastball between your letters. That's Rick, cool. Rick you need that guy on your team. Yeah. yeah. Joe, seen, Kelly, Joe Kelly is on the team. I've seen that cheese. <laughs> oh, yeah. You were aware a left-handed ball right in the back. Um, nice outing by Strip Club today out, uh, around the rain. Like, somehow he only gave up two runs. It, he kind of feels like he's sort of settling into his own now. What, this is start five back in the rotation? Mm-hmm. He looks good. I mean, it's, it's getting there. It's a buildup. I mean, when you go from the bullpen. <clears throat> I mean, he, start, he started the season in the rotation, then he went to the bullpen. I mean, you're not just going to overnight be ready and comfortable in those situations. Mm-hmm. He's used to facing three, maybe four hitters a game. If he goes two innings, maybe six or seven to going, you know, as long as he can, four or five innings if possible. So um, I think we even saw with Bueller his first few starts of the year when he didn't really have much of a spring mm-hmm. training. Even the guys who are experienced starting, it's still a build up to kind of get back into the throwing shape and feel comfortable with being a starter and facing that many hitters and going through the lineups multiple times. Mm-hmm. So I think over the last couple of starts, you've seen more of what he's capable of. I thought his outing against Boston was phenomenal. So um, feel pretty good about that, um, especially as a fifth starter with. The rest yeah. of the rotation that they have, we're not asking him to be an ace out there. So I, I've been happy with it. Yeah, that that's uh, that's a lot of people don't like to to realize. You know, up until Hill went down, Maeda was the fifth starter, and he's um, he's been a fantastic fifth starter for just about any club. He might be a three or four, or maybe even two, if it's you know a rough club or or whatever. But to be able to plug in somebody who is an eight, uh, 2018 All Star, he's good. He's good. He's gonna get there, and we say that because he's a friend of ours. <laughs> That's why we say it specifically because of that. <clears throat> Jack, he, it also looks like he got the brunt of the uh, downpour today yes. when he was pitching. I mean, he it was, was it was happy. It was yeah. pit, pouring pretty hard on him. But I mean, it, absolutely, I completely agree. But it's like in those situations, you can't like bring the tarp out. You can't postpone right. that game. Get away day. Right. Mm-hmm. Series starts today or sorry tomorrow in in L. A. Right. They got to go to Pittsburgh. It's like and and we're not going back there again yeah. this year. Yeah. So yeah. absolutely, just the act t- of doing it. I mean, you have to do everything you can to get the game in. So like he had to wear it, I guess, a little bit in that sense. Yeah. But. He bailed through it. I thought he, I thought he pitched really well. Yeah, he did really well considering the conditions he yeah. was in and the defense behind him for, for that rain. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, in terms of, like, the umpiring crew, definitely the right call to let that one run out. You could tell there was points where Stripling kind of, like, looked back, like, we, are we still going? And yeah. they were just, like, didn't say anything. He's like, all right, we're going. Let's do it. That was so, the most frustrated I've seen him with something other than himself. Like, right. It starts with four. I've seen him, like, come off the mound and, like, are you kidding me? Like, what are you doing out there? But this was the first time there was a pitch that was called a ball where he kind of looked back like that was a strike. And yeah. then, like, the rain thing where it's just, like, he just seemed frustrated with the elements more than it was, like, his own pitching. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm not used to seeing that from Stripling. Yeah, Bill Miller was kind of uh, all, o- all over the place today. It was uh, vintage it, Bill Miller. He was like pitcher friendly Bill Miller, which he ranges from pitcher friendly Bill Miller to hitter friendly Bill Miller. But you know, <clears throat> today it helped Stripling's case a few times, but also hurt him. Yeah, probably more often. Of course, the th- the biggest thing that hurt him was uh, everybody with me all together. That's right, the bullpen, as it does <laughs> so. Um, Awesome. So well, I guess we can. I'm going to go with well. I'm going to spin this in a positive manner. The Terribly bullpen, well. The bullpen did what it does best, which is blow the game. Unfortunately, um, we'll, we'll kind of tease the uh, the trade talk a little bit um, here by saying you know it's 13. I think it's 13 days until trade deadline. So the question is, when the hell is something going to happen? Of course, we have people in the stream being like, "Go get this person. Go get that person. Who are you going to trade in that regard?" Um, by the way, it is the one year anniversary. One year anniversary. That's right of the Manny Matado, uh, Machado trade. So I prefer the Manny Matado trade. Matado. Kuna, Manny Matado, Matado. Yeah. Kuna Matado. Yeah. Um, Lion King came out today, so it's perfect. Right, ne- T. Never heard of it. You know everything. Yeah. Oh wait, I got that. Uh, yeah, resident young person here. Lion King did come out today. Beyonce's in it, so go watch it. What about cats? Oh yeah, it's haunting. <laughs> Isn't that Lion King? No, <laughs> no, but there's a disturbing like semi t- trailer or something for that cats thing. I don't know. It looks very awful. That's all I got to say about that. But I'm scared. Um, before digging into like trade rumors, murmurs, and all that, we got to talk about what we currently have. And <sighs> well, what do we currently have? We got Kenley, hmm? Kelly, Kelly, Joe Kelly. So we got Kenley. Joe Kelly looked like. I mean, he is. He's absolutely made a huge turn. Um, I don't think he was expecting to get pressed into duty in, what was it, the sixth inning today? No, seventh inning. Uh, and then he got pressed into duty, and it, it, it did not work out. Um, make me feel positive about uh, what we have right now. Like, are we? can we be done with uh, Caleb Ferguson until he's, like, 100% right? Like, I'm all over the place with this one, but that's just where it is right now. We keep relying on these guys. I think... <clears throat> In the current sense and shape of the bullpen, there's going to be days where you're very frustrated. A lot of that comes with having a 14-game lead in the division, whatever it is now after today, um, and being able to experiment. And, you know, we saw the other day, I think it was in one of the Boston games, where Yimmy came in in a situation where I'm like, wow, tie game. We're putting a guy we haven't really put in a whole lot of high-leverage situations in here. And it worked out. It was okay. Yep. Um, so I think it's kind of playing around to see who can step up and fill in those roles. Um, sometimes it's been good, sometimes it's been bad, um, but it's kind of a luxury that you have to sit, to be able to experiment and figure out who's going to be able to, to fill those spots. Um, you mentioned it, Kelly's been better. I think that's good. I think everybody wants to DFA Kenley whenever he blows a save, but like, that's the nature of, of the -hmm. role that he has is people are going to hate him when he blows a save, but for the most part, he's been pretty good this year. He's had a couple pretty bad outings. I would argue that that fly ball that fell in front of Pollock um, Pollock the other day, that was bad luck. I Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously they're playing no doubles, but if I'm a closer and I get a pop up to center field I expect that to be caught that doesn't stop the next couple hits that they got off them but regardless that's two outs in that situation so it's a very different inning so I I think some of the Kenley will never be good again is a little bit overblown Um, I think he's been a reliable closer Um, I don't know if he'll ever be what he was two years ago but um, I don't think we need to cut bait on anything like that so yeah I think uh, in Dodgers Nation we've been so blessed for so incredibly long and we've talked about it a number of times like to have just these elite shutdown game over closers and and to you know we we really haven't had to see them have a decline like this and you know pulling up some of the stats over from our friends at quality of pitch um, the the numbers I'll, I'll tell you the numbers prove. He's not Kenley anymore. He's a different version. But uh, he's missing his spots like a mofo. The, the, the analytics will tell you this, and I'll tell you this. He's missing his spots like a mofo. The velo's down. He's, he's fighting it still all the time. Um, <clears throat> but, yeah, it, it, it's, maybe it's a, is it a tough pill to swallow? Is that what it is? I think, <laughs> let's, listen, we, I I mean, we, a lot we talked digest. about this on Twitter a lot where, you know, we talked about the last time that you really trusted Kenley Jansen. And pretty much there was like a clear cut answer that the last time anybody really trusted Kenley Jansen in a game is game two of the 2017 mm-hmm. World Series, which I was at and got to witness that. So that was a lot of fun. I appreciated that. <laughs> it was well worth the $1,500 ticket or whatever it was at the time. Um, 
American dollars? Yeah. Wow. Just to sit way up. You got you to gotta remember, man, that's the first time the World Series has been back to L.A. in 30 years at that point. Mm-hmm. So people were paying a lot of money to go. Um, well within your lifetime. And I didn't know there was going to be another World Series the next year. <laughs> so that's the other issue. With you that. didn't get that memo? No, I got to watch the Red Sox win the World Series the next year, though. So that was great. <sighs> I've been at all the good games, guys. <laughs> uh, you know, when he gave up that home run in the ninth inning of uh, Game 2, I feel like that was it was just timing. I'm not necessarily going to say that shook him for the rest of his career. It's nothing like that. It's just kind of timing. Um, you know, when you are a guy who throws one pitch, which is kind of what he is, he is a one pitch guy. He's developing that slider. It's getting better. I think still think he doesn't feel confident with it. And he doesn't place it very well always. But when you're a guy who leans really heavily onto one pitch all the time, unless you're Mariano Rivera, it's going to be tough to do that for with sustained success throughout your career. But and when your velocity is starting to fail on you, for that one pitch, which is more than likely mechanical, something that, I mean, we've seen in Boston. He got up to, he was cranking in 95 on some mm-hmm. of those pitches. Like, he was he was mm-hmm. gassed up. And, he, you know, he, there's this story that he called in to the Dave yeah. and told him, like, I'm, I'm hot right now. Put me in the game. So, you know, there's obviously, you know, Ricky pitch. There's days where you feel like, I could take on this entire team right now. And then there's days where you're like, you should probably take We saw take the trophies. <laughs> you should probably those take days were very out. rare. <laughs> right. <laughs> There are a lot of, uh, is the wind blowing in today? Yeah, I'm good to go. <laughs> Let's go. Let's do it now. <laughs> they got that Chicago wind. Um, but, the, you know, you, you already alluded to it. Like, you look at Mariano Vera, uh, Rivera. He's the best to ever do it by sheer, sheer volume, by by playoff record. And he did it all with one pitch, what, ninety more than 95% of the time he had one pitch. He lost velocity, too, throughout his career. He came up as, like, what, a 94, 96 dude, and by the end of it, he was a you know an 89 to 91 guy. Can Kenley give up on trying to find that velo again? Do you think um, – because the movement is still, like, sometimes there and sometimes not. It's either he's trying to get the velo and forgets about the movement or he's trying to get one or the other. Let him be an 89-mile-an-hour guy with control and movement. Do you think that gets uh, – that that plays up again for him. Yeah, absolutely. But at the same time, <clears throat> and this isn't like a knock on Dodger fans because everybody wants a lockdown closer. But mm-hmm. if if he's pumping it at eighty nine miles an hour, even if he is really really good, are you are you going to feel confident when he takes the mound right. that okay, this is a safe, this is going to be done? And then yeah. all I'm saying is that the reason I don't know where I'm going with this. Basically, I'm saying even if he does find the location, find everything you're talking about, but his velocity's down, I don't mm-hmm. think it's going to change the fact that when he goes in the game, there's still, still going to be some people just yeah. going, well, here we go again. Kenley, he stinks. He's the worst. Yeah. And it's like, and he's going to blow a save. He's going to be 25 out of 27 in the year. People are like, remember those two saves he blew? Yeah. Those were two more wins we could have had. We could have been 110 wins this year. This is ridiculous. He's the worst. So <laughs> I think sometimes, I don't want to call anybody spoiled, but like he's been so good for so long. Oh, we're it's spoiled. Like, you've seen yeah, a little regression. And, and you're comparing him a little bit to Mariano Rivera, which is like literally the best closer in the history of the game. So <laughs> aware, I think there's an in-between of, of what there can be. So We had we had, we had had Pete Gagne. We had Pete Saito. We had a little bit of Pete Broxton. I, th- so. I thought you called him Pete Gagne. Yeah, I, I thought like, so that's too, not his no. name. <laughs> Pete uh, we had yeah. Pete Yes uh, or uh, Yancy Brazabon. So th- we, again, oh, we're, yeah. we Ooh. we're Dodgers fans. We deserve the best of the best of throughout eternity. That's Peak, just, Peak Ramon Chantoso. Uh, these are my yeah. <laughs> until uh, Joe. Torrey. Are we playing old Dodgers? Is that yes. what we're doing? Yeah, <laughs> like uh, like uh, as Blake Harris did the other day. Um, oh, yeah, and just how dare you put the disrespect on Casey Blake like that? <laughs> Casey Blake was a fine man. Um, what else was I going to go with that? I don't know. I mean, again, we're we're going back to now. Let's let's you know Joe Kelly. Like we already said, he's doing well outside of today. I think his previous nineteen games, his, his ERA was around like one two yep. something like that. Yeah, and that's dating back to the start of June. And you look at Julio is the same thing. He's given up pretty much the same thing since the start. My of June. Two earned runs and Julio and Joe. Like if they sustain that for the rest of the year, more importantly, I don't really care about the rest of the year. I care about the playoffs. If they sustain that in the playoffs, if you have Julio and Joe Kelly and then Kenley, I mean, that's a World Series roster. That's a World Series bullpen one way or another. The two things you have to keep in mind is one, like it's the same thing for a lineup. You're allowed to have guys that slump. You just Mm -hmm. don't want multiple guys slumping at one time. So when Caleb or their entire season, Austin Barnes. No comment. Uh, So if there's a few guys like, Pedro Baez hasn't been as good lately. So if you have a few guys that are slumping all at the same time, it makes the bullpen look a lot worse. Since the start of June, they actually have the second best bullpen ERA in the National League. Um, so they've actually been pitching fairly well, even though the last few games haven't been that great. Right. And if you look at the playoffs and you know this hypothetical World Series, you mentioned Joe Kelly, you mentioned Julio Rios, you mentioned 
Kenley Jansen, how many arms are you actually using in the bullpen in those situations? Mm-hmm. Factor in that if you go with a potentially a three-man rotation for that, mm-hmm. now you put Stripling and Maeda back in there. What's Rich Hill going to do? So you have these other options that aren't really available to you right now that are also going to be added to the pen. So some of these guys that are struggling probably aren't going to be used that much at that point anyway. Yeah, but but you also need those guys to, you know, other guys. You need at some point to be able to rely on Dylan Floro or Yumi Garcia yeah. or whatever in the World Series or in, in the in the NLCS, NLDS, whatever. And we, the la- at least last year a lot, you saw that a lot. I mean, honestly, both World Series, you saw that a lot. And I hate how often we have to go back, you know, the, the, um, the awfulness of privilege of being able to say we've gone to the World Series two years in a row. Woo! Um, <laughs> um, is that right? No. no. Sure. <laughs> it's confusing how yeah. we end up just using the one or two guys. Brandon Morrow was, was pitched into the ground. He didn't get everything... Um, or he couldn't get it done by the end of, of the World Series. Uh, Kenley's been broken since then, and you see the use. Uh, actually, on this this particular sheet, I think, uh, yeah, in 2017, Kenley threw the most pitches he'd ever thrown in a season by, what, more than 1,000, almost like 1,600 more pitches in a season, and since he's been rough. We've had the article before uh, on, on DodgersNation.com, check it out, about how much better Kenley is with more rest. Right. Um, and in not tie games. And in not tie games and all the situations. Yeah, stop bringing that man into um, tie games. But, uh, again, it's not any one person. It's, it's when the same way – Hitting begets hitting. You know, everybody likes to gel together. It seems like the bullpen really feeds off one another. And when one is bad, everybody's kind of bad this year. Mm. And I blame you. It's definitely my fault. <laughs> I'm the bullpen coach. And I think there's something to be said for kind of like we were saying here. You know, putting Pedro Baez in in a clean inning, or putting Dylan Floro in with a clean inning to start instead of coming in with runners on first and second and nobody out. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, if you just look at the numbers for the year, their left on base percentage for the bullpen is 14th in the national league. Their Harry runner score percentage is 14th in the national league. So mm-hmm. very poor. Uh, yeah. So when you have kind of, like you said, okay, this guy comes in and does his, his job in the seventh. I come on the eighth and do my job. Kenley does his job in the ninth. It's a lot cleaner. It's a lot easier. You can be a lot more confident going in than going yeah. in and saying, okay, there's nobody out tying runs on third. I have to strike out the next two guys. Yeah. Otherwise this run's going to score and I blow it. So, you know, being able to have those easier, softer landing positions, I think, will do a lot. Uh, do no, a number for the bullpen. Like I think uh, today, Dylan Floro, for the most part, did his job. He got the ground ball he right. needed. It just was hit to the wrong spot, which happens with ground ball pitchers. And unfortunately, it all just kind of continued to unravel from there. But you know, you think about the possibility of being able to be like, oh, hey, you know, what? instead of. Dylan Floro in the situation, and well, most of us love Dylan Floro. He's not a guy I want running out there in a tie game in the ninth inning of a World Series or whatever. You know, I do like is that whole uh, Felipe Vasquez guy. That's never going to happen. Is that going to like? Never going to happen. Rick confirms it's definitely going to happen. I mean, how many teams are eliminated right now? I know. This is a weird, weird. It's a weird like, year. Brad so, Hand was a top actually, trade target mm-hmm. for a while, and now the Indians are like, they're making a run. Yeah, they're mm-hmm. going to make they're a run. They're going to make the playoffs. When you, look at, when you look at the standings as they stand right now, the Pirates are 45 and 50. They've lost every game except one out of the All-Star break, I think is accurate. Didn't double-check that. But they're 45 and 50, six and a half out of the Central, and just four out of the wild card. So that stupid second wild card spot just yeah. gives everybody hope that it does not actually exist. And it's... <laughs> And it, it cuts down the number of guys that are available, which drives yep. up the price of each guy that is available. So even if Vasquez right. does get traded, if the Pirates kind of cut bait and say we need to you know, stockpile for the future, well, now I, I can't think of a, a fan base that I've communicated with in the past month that hasn't told me that their bullpen is the worst in Major League Baseball. I was just in Boston where their bullpen is not very good, and I heard it from everybody that I talked to. No, I have friends that are Red Sox fans who tell me every single day how bad the bullpen is. Well, guess what? When they're out there targeting bullpen arms, it's driving the price up for the Dodgers looking for a bullpen yeah, arm. Right. Everybody else, everybody else wants them. Because everybody with, else wants these guys. Plus, with how fantastic everybody knows the Dodgers' uh, farm system is, they want to try to, you know, Jack purge as much as they can from it. Because hey, you know what? The Dodgers, you've had your run. You don't deserve to keep doing this. You don't get to keep doing it year yeah. after year. But I mean, you look at other teams too, like Detroit. They're twenty-seven and a half out of the division, or whatever it is. They have two really good arms that people mm-hmm. are going to covet and be after. And they probably shouldn't get that much for them. Shane Green, obviously, is a little bit of an exception. He might be a guy that 
based off of this one year he should get a lot of. Doesn't really have the track record behind him for you know longevity, but he's a guy that should command a pretty decent prospect package this year, and it's only going to go up because there's going to be a lot of teams yep. in on that guy. Or you, th- you talk about you know Matt Boyd, too, who's been connected to the Dodgers. He's like a guy who statistically doesn't look like anything special. I mean, if you look at the his baseline stats, but then you start looking at you know more deeper stats like – the Dodgers are really big on spin rate with, mm-hmm. with pitchers, especially relievers and velocity and things like that. He's up there. He's up near the top of the league in a lot of stuff. So guys like that who in the past wouldn't have gone for very much in a, in a package is actually going to go for a pretty decent amount. So that's yep. going to – it's a weird year. It's going to be a really weird trade deadline. Um, I think we're going to really need to get some clarity within this next week on what it looks mm-hmm. like because it's going to come down to the deadline for sure. Again, agree, yeah. what the biggest trade of last year happened today one year ago and – so far this year and a year now where there's one trade deadline, nothing's happening. It's weird. It's very weird. And I don't like it. Do something about it. Fix it. Fraudman. <laughs> um, so we, you already brought up the fact that a lot of people don't like to think about, uh, you know, by the time you get to the, to the postseason, you're really going to be running out three, maybe four starters, but you get the people who are like, oh, let's go get another starter. Let's go get a scene, you know, like Kluber. You see uh, what well, Deekman's a, a reliever, but you see, you know, some people like Matt Boyd or something like that. Or Madison Bumgarner. <laughs> or Madison Bumgarner. Mm-hmm. Um, Sorry, there's no ocean here. So maybe he'll actually, maybe he'll play better. Maybe be better, yeah. I mean, there is an ocean. Here, there is an ocean because here, yeah. LA is great. LA is pause for effect. Pause for effect. Thank you. <laughs> better than New York. Oh, um, oh, I guess I can go with that one. They still feel really loud, but um, That's you. And I lost I lost my th- my train of thought on the beef. Oh, I just really like that. There, there's not ever going to be a need for a starting pitcher on this one. But do you see, or or could you see, you know, the Dodgers finding a way to go pluck a guy just to move Meta back into the bullpen for his, you know, yearly relief uh, role, or even Stripling or something like that? It's possible. I mean, I obviously I've no insider information so i know that i mean talking about you as a baseball guy freeman and the front office's job is to find a way to improve their team Mm -hmm. both now and to make the postseason run so they're not going to do anything stupid they're not going to sell their future just for this but if there's a way that they can acquire a star that gives them a better chance to win games now and win games in a world series both with their starting rotation and their bullpen they'll make that move Mm -hmm. but um i don't think it's probably at the top of their list but if they can find a way to leverage something like that and and kind of work with it um, I think they can kind of strengthen both sides if they if they find the right fit. You got anything? Um, I don't want them to trade Ross Stripling. <laughs> I know. He's our friend now. That's all I can say about that. It's you weird. Never, never meet guys that you like. Yeah, it's weird. you weirder. don't want him to leave ever. Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. We, we love our, our Rick and we love our Roths. If they trade, <gasps> if Rick, they Ross. trade Rick. Rick Ross. Rick Ross. If I got oh shipped to like gosh. Cincinnati. They're like, we're trading Rick to Cincinnati for a uh, reliever. Oh, no. Hey, no! Yeah, you'd be, hey you know, I'd, I'd trade him for Amir Garrett. Probably, I, Skyline I, I probably hold on. I mean, <laughs> within re- we want a series, man. You know, we can, not we can still keep show. in contact. <laughs> he didn't even laugh after he said that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, holy, that's a good idea. Oh, serious? <laughs> can, can we trade away people in that regard? Come on now. Um, where are we at on this? So. Well, uh, we got a, a question here for Rick uh, asking, what kind of programs do you use for team analytics um, or even, you know, just kind of using in your bullpen stuff, uh, you know, beyond Excel? <laughs> uh, I do use a lot of Excel, but uh, I spend a lot of time on fan graphs, kind of digging into that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's really useful. Um, Stats pass kind of gives me all the numbers that I need, but then when I try to dig a little bit deeper, it's when I go into the, the fan graph stuff. And mm-hmm. um, Brooks baseball a lot, too. We'll do a lot of the pitch usage and. Yeah, um, no, no problem. You're welcome for that. <laughs> I oh. know Brooke. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the pitch usage and, and frequency and all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, uh those are two that I probably tap into most. And what do you use Brooke? Uh, I use a lot of fan graphs. Wow. Fan graphs is a particular favorite wow. of mine. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, it's just so well built out and mm-hmm. it's so easy to search and uh, filter through things and things like that. My mind thinks of like, first baseman who have less than 25 at bats against a left-handed pitcher in 2016, like that type of thing. Like those are the stats I want to know. It's really, really weird stats. Well, that's why I that I think like, about before I like fall asleep. I'll, I'll, I'll text Rick about those. Like, hey, buddy, can you find me these? Because I don't know where to look for this stuff. I'm always like, I want to know what sweet. what James Loney hits on rainy rainy days. After know, after in, in I May. trade you to Cincinnati, can I still get those stats from you? Time difference, man. We'll see. <laughs> that's true. That's a good point. You got to account for that. So we got we got more Excel questions. Apparently, uh, does uh, do you have a fantasy baseball Excel template that you're willing to sell? 
I have a fantasy baseball team that I just remembered I had. So like just right now, like literally, like I was like, oh no, I haven't adjusted my roster in two months. So I think you guys are doing swimming. Last time I looked, I was five hundred. So wow, that's pretty yeah. good for not paying attention yeah. to anything. That's like that's like better than old Padres, standard Padres. Oh yeah, okay, I got you. Yeah, follow. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's you know. Good. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's see. Let's get some more questions. You find some questions over there too. They're just all Rick questions, which is good because Rick's on the show. On the He's show, the star, and he is a guest, so that makes sense. His final show before I trade him for uh-huh. Amir Garrett. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't have this sort of power. I'm sorry, guys. Are you sure? And I'm also happy because we love Rick. He's a nice guy, yeah. friendly fella. You could follow him home. People really liked you calling him Fraudman. I don't know if that's the first time they've ever heard that, uh, but that really blew up as soon as you said it. Just thought I'd throw that out there. I don't know how to say this person's name. It looks like Pate de Grimavavi. Oh, yeah, I'm going to go with that. But it says rotate closers, no room for prima donnas. So we did uh, our, our Tim, SD Dodger Tim. I think I nailed that, by the way. Thank you. Gr- Pat- Patier Grimavavi. <laughs> anyway. I'm I'm an expert in enunciation. <laughs> uh, we had the post recently about you know, not kind of pulling away from the set closer mentality and really going more with the fireman. Does I mean, let's pretend you're not you right now. You're not in there where you you have to see some of these people on on occasions. Do you think the the, the potential of Kenley Jansen being able to handle that is high or low? Just from like a reaction to it, yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, it comes down to pride and ego, I guess. I don't, I don't know him personally, so mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, I'd be, I, if it were me, I'd be frustrated with essentially not being demoted, but saying, "Hey, we don't trust you to, to have the job for yourself." Right. I think when you see like that stuff like that happen, it's more we're going to use our closer in the highest leverage situation. So he's not going to be our ninth inning guy, but he's going to pitch whenever we need him mm-hmm. at the absolute most. So it, it would kind of be, un, I don't want to say unprecedented, but. Um, you know, when we see what like the Indians in the past and the Royals, I think at one point did it, it was, we're going to use our closer in a seventh because we're facing the heart of the order. And if we get through them, we probably won't see them again. Mm-hmm. So, um, it kind of be a little different feel than, you know, at that point we're basically saying, Hey, closer, we trust you so much. We're going to use you when we need you most, not, Hey, we only trust you once out of every two or three games. So it's, uh, it's a tough conversation to have to say, we, we think you're really good and we want you to close for us. Sometimes we just don't think you're good enough to close for us all the time. But that's again that that's still going for like one stat. What happens if in the in the eighth inning you have you know two, three, four coming up? These are the guys, and you know you own them. And instead, are you going to send out a Caleb Ferguson, or are you going to be like, hey guys, I want this inning. I don't care if it means I don't get the save stat, which is <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm okay. I I would be open to exploring that again in my role that has nothing to do with determining that. But obviously, yeah. Like if that's the conversation <laughs> you're having with Kenley or insert mm-hmm. closer name is, hey, we want you in the hot. Like, that's the way you have to phrase that conversation is, mm-hmm. hey, we want you against their best. Mm-hmm. If their best is in the eighth inning, that's what it's going to be. Is that okay with you? I think someone who is confident and feels good and, and has a lot of pride in what they do will be like, like heck yeah. Like that, Kenley called from the bullpen to get into the game. That's how bad he wanted it. It's like right. he mm-hmm. should be open to that conversation. Whereas if you're saying we just don't always trust you in the ninth, I think that's a little bit different conversation to have where you're not going to get as good of a reaction as you'd like. There's a guy in the comments that says <laughs> you look like Sean from Boy Meets World. Right or strong? I'm gonna have to look that one up. I don't know if I remember what Sean looked like. We don't I know. We don't know your I things. I mean, he's it's, a white guy with a beard. It's from the '90s. Yeah. This I mean, I know Boy now. Meets World. But yeah, we know of it. Okay. He's, he's a white guy he's with far a beard. Far better looking. Than I am. <laughs> well, I think his head's really big, so I would disagree. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Rick is more Take beautiful that. than that man. More <laughs> Confirmed. Be- <laughs> more beautiful. And Jack says Rick to Cincinnati for Luis Castillo. Then you resign next year. You in? Be a horrible trade for Cincinnati. Well, I know. I mean, I'm kidding. The, hey, you know, hey why can't we give them two horrible <laughs> trades in one year? <laughs> they don't have a stack guy like you, man. <laughs> I'm happy about that. Uh, the Let's thing. be Frank podcast agrees that he does look like Sean. <laughs> so <laughs> thanks, Franks. You got two. Great. <laughs> right. uh, the, they said from the side only. So I'm gonna not look. <laughs> dead onto the camera. Yeah, you want to look at that center camera Straight or that one? Into it. <laughs> uh, Logan Jones, friend of the stream, says, "Should we trade Gavin Lux for Brad Hand?" No. No. Never touch Gavin Lux. We have to talk Lux. to him. <laughs> we yeah. have to meet him first. Yeah, never, never, like, how much do you pay attention to, to the, the guys down on the farm, Rick? Obviously, I know you have a lot to pay attention to up here, so we understand if the bandwidth doesn't allow you to get too much down on the farm, but, you, you, you like, Gavin Lux, dude. Honestly, I, on a day-to-day basis, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to it. I know the names. I know every once in a while I'll check in, but mm-hmm. 
there's certain guys who have forced their way into us knowing what they do, uh, whether it's just seeing stuff pop up, pop up on Twitter or just kind of getting updates to Twitter, um, Twitter or just getting updates. And I think, I don't know if he <clears throat> had another bad fit, but he was four for four earlier today, Gavin Lux, yep. and at that point was 532 in, in uh, AAA. Like I think he's home uh, runs. I think he's ready. Yeah. I mean, it's so that kind of stuff. It's like, normally I wouldn't, I'd be like, Hey, I wonder what Gavin Lux is up to maybe check in here and there. But when he's doing stuff like that, it's like every day I need to see what he's doing. Cause it's been remarkable. So I'm, I'm aware of what he's doing. I'm aware of what Will Smith has done in his limited opportunities mm-hmm. down there. I know he got hurt shortly after going back down, but I'm aware that those guys are performing very well. So I don't know what the plan is for when or if they'd be called up, but I'm ob- obviously they're passing the test on in Oklahoma City. When I saw uh, – one of my friends actually texted me to remind me of this. When I saw Lux get drafted in 2016, I was like – I had texted him. I was like, look for that guy in the future because mm-hmm. that guy just has a straight-up baseball face. Like, he yeah, looks well, like he has a baseball gamer. neck too. And then as we watched him, thick every boy. time he like moved up in the system, he'd text me and be like, you were right, dude. You were right. And now he texted me yesterday. He's like, dude, Gavin Lux, man. And I was like, here he comes. He's coming, man. So that guy, I would not trade that guy. Out of all of our top prospects, top five maybe, it'd be it'd be a tough call for me to trade him. Yeah, that's why I said last week. He of all of of the the top four, which is the real every ones that everybody's coveting, he's the most untouchable for me. Like I just can't palette the idea of losing Gavin Lux because while he's not the most apt defender, we'll say uh, his bat is going to pull. Baseman. Great second baseman. He's going to fill a spot he that we be, have not had filled in a very long time. He doesn't have an exceptional arm, but if he could be like a David X9 and actually have, you know, he could hit his spots, maybe it would I play. I X9 played short. He should not have been a right? shortstop. It was gold. He's, a, he's built for second base. <laughs> World Series MVP <laughs> at second base. David he X9. won a truck. What's he doing now? I'll take a truck. He's like a biology teacher or something? We'll also take some zip fizz over here, guys. That's at Dodgers Nation on uh, Twitter and at official Dodgers Nation on Twitter or on Instagram. We're about to hit 100K, so go follow us. (laughs) Are you going to ask, but you don't even know what our handle is. (laughs) What? Never mind. Move along. (laughs) I can do whatever I want. Do you not see this? I'm drinking heavily. Um, Oh, yeah. Gotcha. This is the one we're kind of doubling back a little bit, but uh, Tim Stafford, not Tim Stoffer, but Tim Stafford asks, how many games has the bullpen blown for us now? I've lost track. Do you have any uh, any numbers by chance? I don't actually off the top of my head. I have an, uh, <laughs> I literally stopped doing the series notes to come here like right before I started working on the bullpen, so I don't have any of that off the top of my head. So, much so, much so, games. So if uh, Joe and Oral sound a bit like unprepared tomorrow, After everybody the blames us. Like, oh. After the seventh, they're like, <laughs> it's, it's looking them, back. It's them damn blue heaven <laughs> bastards. They, notes are blank. They, they ruined uh, Rick and the booth, uh, booth boys. Booth oh, boys. Gavin Lux is watching right now. How you doing, Gavin? We're talking about you, buddy. Hey, Gavin. We're, we're very, very excited for you. And again, you're our most untouchable uh, prospect. He just here. missed we all the good things I said about him. Unless he double didn't. back. You know, fall. Tell your friends over there down at OKC. Yeah, you know me. Um, <laughs> uh, except for all the bad stuff we said about your arm, like you know. You get it. You get it. I got a terrible arm. I can't that. run, but um, my name is at Diamond Hawkers. <laughs> uh, what about um, – oh, actually, I think we did have a few numbers. Um, Jason, one of our writers, Jason McClure. So here's a fat shout-out to Jason McClure. He, he's, a, he's a beast, and uh, you want to go give him a follow on the Internet Machine. I think as of today, today was their ninth, the, the bullpen's 19th loss, if I'm not mistaken, or if he's not mistaken. Um, it might be 18th. Okay, 18th says 44 save opportunities. They've converted to, uh, 27 of them, which is, uh, what, fifth most blown saves. Um, it says fifth fewest uh, holds at 40 when the league average is 47. Yada, yada, yada. Um, they're not doing all that good. You already mentioned the inherited runner scoring, and, and you know, that's just uh, – that's been a problem for the Dodgers, but this year it, it really feels so much worse. Um, so there's your answer, <laughs> sort of. Uh, what else do we have? I know you want you want to talk about, and this kind of leads to a question I had about some some other potential position player trades. But you wanted to talk about Corey Slump. I do want to talk a little bit about Corey, Corey's Slump. Since Corey hasn't been one hundred percent right. I mean, even when he kind of came back from his injury initially, I was kind of like, it was a weird spot for him to come back in because Taylor obviously was on fire. Kike, not so much, but there wasn't really as big of a need as we thought there was going to be for him to be back. And it was one of those complicated situations where it always seems to happen like that. You know, Beatty's hitting very well. The young guys are hitting very well. And then you have a guy come back who you really want in the lineup. And when he went down with an injury, we were all very nervous about it. And then you kind of were like, it's actually not that big of a deal that he's going to be out as long as he is. But, I mean, since he's been back, you know, he's like 
four for 22 or something like that since he's come back. Mm-hmm. He's, he doesn't look <clears throat> locked in, but, you know, six games back, is that what it is? Yeah. Six games off of the off of the DL mm-hmm. or IL? And probably back a little too soon. I had mentioned he looked a little – he still looked a little hesitant. He looked a little ginger when he was running, trying to run that's out just some plays. That's Justin Turner. <laughs> little ginger. God damn it. Yeah. Um, you know, he's striking out a little bit more than he's used to. He's got a little bit higher strikeout rate than what we normally see from him. He's you didn't I had brought it up to you. Do you have Corey numbers? Maybe you stole his thunder. Maybe, yeah. I didn't mean to. But I brought <laughs> oh. it up to you, I think, uh, the first time we had you on the podcast this year was that, no, this season. Yeah. that It seemed like Corey was going after a lot more first pitches than he has in the past. And when I looked at it, I don't have the numbers on it because I didn't write them down, but he is going after yep. a lot more first pitches than he has in the past. And, you know, that can mean a lot of different things. Um, you know, historically, first pitch swingers hit for a higher average in the league. Mm-hmm. First pitch hits are more often than any other pitch, I think, in the league. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it makes sense, but also that's not what we're used to seeing from him. He is going the other way with the ball a lot. And early on, that looked like that was a really good thing. And now it's starting to look like, okay, was the, has there been something wrong with him throughout the year? H- has he really been that bothered by his surgeries? You know, especially the hip, I think, plays into that big time. The long layoff. The it's the first time you're playing, you know, allegedly healthy for a right. while. You build bad habits. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not worried about him because – Obviously, he's Corey Seager at the end of the day, and at the end of the day, he's one of my favorite players and one of the toughest guys I've seen play baseball, and I think he's, he's going handsome. to be... He is <laughs> handsome, yes. He's also <laughs> handsome. And uh, six games back, I'm not worried about it. I think 25 games back, I probably start to worry about it a little bit, mm-hmm. but in the meantime, you know, there's a need for him to play because CT's going to be out a little bit. Yeah, with... So, with apparently. Glass half full on Corey. Yeah. You're right. In the Boston series, I want to say there was one game where he saw like he had like four bats and saw six pitches or something right. like that. Mm-hmm. Like he was very aggressive early, and Roberts even mentioned it. Like, hey, we, we want him to kind of be a little bit more patient if possible. It's not really his game. Um, you mentioned it. Or actually, early in the season, he was driving a lot of balls the opposite way, but not really for power, so they are getting right. caught. That's mm-hmm. when he was slumping. When he started to get hot, that's when he started to hit more line drives, pulling the ball, and then also shooting to the right center, which is more his game. Um, he's done that again since he's been back, but again, a little bit too much air, not driving them as much as he was, right. not, not hit as hard. So. I think you'll find it. Um, some of it, I, I, if you look at his, just his numbers in the Philly series, I think he was four for 12, so 333. He walked five times in the series as well, so he was on base a lot. So it's a small sample size, but at least in Philly, he looked a lot more comfortable. And you have to factor in, I know the rest of the team was hitting, but the Boston starting staff is pretty solid that mm-hmm. they faced, and it was three lefties. So <clears throat> overall, Seager's not, as, Seager's not like Muncie and Bellinger where they hit lefties this year just yeah. as well as they hit righties. He has struggled against left-handed pitching, and right out – Right out of the gate, right back from injury, right back from break, he faces three pretty good left-handed yeah. pitchers. So I kind of give him a pass on that series, I guess. So I'm not as concerned about kind of his slowish start because um, he did look a lot better in the Philly series. Yeah, you you, you do want to see him get that line drive rate back up because it seems just passing the eye test, I don't have any numbers, but that the line, right, line drive rate does uh, feel low to my eyes, whatever that means. Uh, but like you were saying about, about CT3 too, like, yeah, it's now such a huge thing. Um, to really have Corey be what he was getting back to. Thankfully, this one's going to hurt me a little bit, but Kike is rebounding. What up? Last 21 games, 338 average, 419 on base, 646 slugging. It's pretty good. Because I talk crap on him. So we have a theory here in-house yeah. that uh, when, when enough people are, are piling it on on him is when he'll turn it on. And then, you know, if people are like, "Okay, he's he's fine right now," he'll, there's got to be a stat. The, the there pants will <laughs> pants will loosen if they if you will. So here's the thing with Kike, is when he was really struggling early, there was the notion and the thought that he was just very unlucky. Mm-hmm. He, was, he was hitting a lot of right hard, hard line drives yeah. right at people, and that was frustrating because at some point it became hitting a lot of hard line drives right at people to kind of popping up, hitting deep flyouts, not really doing what he does. And I think everyone was frustrated. We were frustrated with him. He was frustrated with himself, but. He's still hitting a lot of balls hard, but now they're finding holes, and he's shooting gaps. He's hitting home runs. Um, he's top 10 in average on base and slugging over the last 21 games in the National League. So um, I just think he's turning in the right direction. It is funny that Seager goes out, Taylor steps up. Yep. <clears throat> Taylor goes out, now Kike steps up. So it's like these guys who are kind of like 
force into action do well and then another person comes back and like at some point taylor's gonna come back and mm-hmm. we're gonna want him to play because he was playing so well and it's like well kike is actually doing pretty well too so yeah, yeah it's, it's a, a good problem to have yeah it's a good problem to have and it's also probably a uh, uh, you know a result of more playing time for mm-hmm. sure we've seen you know la- the last year or last year when when uh cory went down kike took the line share it short yep. and it was phenomenal for for a good amount of time ended up hitting you know career high and and, and dingers and all that but um yeah, it still just pains me on the inside. <laughs> it's it's kind of the Kike. opposite situation we had last year where uh, we went through streaks of everybody being really good at a time and everybody really bad all at the same time. Yep. You know, you talked about the bullpen where it's like, it's fine if one guy's on a bad streak, but you can't have all those people be on a bad streak. But it's different this year where we have some guys slumping and some guys tearing it up, and that's what's sustained us, and that's what helps us to be successful, and that's why we have one of the best, the best record. And uh, our, what, 14 games up, 14 and a half games up? What are we? I don't even know anymore. A lot of games up. All of them. Yeah. Uh, 13 and a half again on the, in, the, uh, in the division. And that's, that's it? Five up on the, the, the league. When the you know, National League. We're the league. Fun fact from AJ, friend of the stream, friend of Dodgers Nation, fine mm-hmm. writer over here at Dodgers Nation, says Corey Seager still leads the team in doubles in 2019, which is surprising. It's funny. That's odd. <laughs> like, Everyone hits home runs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we dinger, bro. We're, We're, a dong, dinger. We're a dong machine. Uh, I like this one. Soap Hap Tip. That's what the name says. Or sop hap tip. I'm gonna go with that again. That's that's a fun one to say. Mm. <laughs> uh, how many errors can you make? Well, you guys aren't helping over there. Uh, how many errors can you make uh, and still get a Gold Glove like like Bellinger because um, he got his second error in that wet field? It doesn't matter. It's about how many bombs you hit. Um, but we actually, it's funny enough, that conversation, because recently it came out, I think it was on the Athletic, where, you know, the Dodgers are kind of, obviously, and this is a subject we're getting to pretty much right now, this is a good segue into it, um, Dodgers are very obviously not playing their best defense on the field no. game to game, and by best defense, I don't mean like they're making errors, I mean, no, the people defense aren't playing alignment. in the proper positions. Right. It came out where Ken Rosenthal was pointing out that, while the Dodgers aren't actively saying it, they really are looking at trying to get Cody Bellinger that gold glove in right field, which is his clearest path to it. Even if he was bouncing back and forth between first and and right field, I think they'd find a way to get him that gold glove. But is uh, is a gold glove more important than than being ready to play your best defense in the postseason? Yes. So you're the award guy. <laughs> Listen, the award system is flawed, and everybody knows it. Okay. Uh, they, they don't make any sense. It's a bunch of writers voting on it. It's it's not logical. Like you <clears> said, <throat> the guy who hits the most home runs, more often than not, somehow ends up with a gold glove as long as he plays decent defense. There's some guys that – I mean, Puig should have won a gold glove a few times. There's a few different situations where he should have won a gold Definitely glove. Definitely won. But offensively, he just wasn't there. I mean, he's obviously somebody that draws a lot of media attention, so there's that, but – it's just a flawed system, you know, in terms of like all of that, really. Yeah. But especially like gold gloves, you know, Silver Slugger is kind of, I mean, it's about, a, about as accurate as you can make what that award is supposed to be. It makes sense. But gold glove is just kind of a weird award for me. I don't know if you have any thoughts on the gold glove award. I feel like there's always a few snubs. I mean, at yeah. the end of the day, the guy who wins it typically is a very good defender. It's not like he yeah. doesn't deserve it. It's just, yeah. you know, how do you, you're splitting hairs, I guess, between what. I mean, I know that Bellinger leads Major League Baseball in defensive run saves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Saved. Uh, I think he's top two in UZR. So, so you're I mean, saying Bellinger for closer? But yeah, sure, yeah. <laughs> by, defensive by, run saved. By all the <laughs> metrics, I mean he's yeah, arguably guys. the best, one of the best outfielders in, in Major League Baseball. So he would deserve it. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of the year, he shifted more into first base as they try to put together kind of their optimal right. postseason lineup. But get back into the regular groove. Yeah, yeah. I, I just think at this point they're trying to find ways to get Jock in the lineup while also keeping Verdugo and Pollock there. So right. it's. We've talked about it before, but kind of an embarrassment of riches of you have 11 guys that you want to play every day or 10 or 11. I mean, Beatty doesn't get that right. many at bats, and he should be playing on most he teams. He should, so yeah. You have so many guys you want to get at bats for consistently, and, and fans and people who are probably watching this don't want to platoon, but that's the option if you want to get all these guys consistent yeah. at bats. So um, I think they're just trying to find creative ways to you know use people and get them on the field and get them the at bats <clears> so they can <throat> – you know, be ready for the postseason. Dodgers fans are triggered by the word platoon. Yeah, the more uh, <laughs> the more healthy we become, the more it becomes not closer to 2018. But the more you're going to start to see those platoons happen, right? Because um, it's not as not as big as a, of a platoon team as it has been, no. or especially last year. No. Last year was kind of all. But over the, the one place true platoons. platoon, I think, is in left field. But now that's sort of negated because well, a it, little bit of Peterson in left or at first. Think about who the platoons were. It was Muncie, 
not against lefties. Well, he's hitting lefties really well. Right. Yeah. Bellinger, not against right. lefties. He's hitting lefties just as well as righties. So, right. mm-hmm. guys, I think if they were still performing like they did last year, we'd probably see some of those. But because yeah. they've done so well, there's no need for it. Yeah. Right. There's like, let them hit. Let's yeah. see what happens. I mean, yep. Jock has faced a couple lefties this year. That didn't happen at all. Yep. Yeah, it was accidental. They were just like, oh, we don't have any guys on the bench. Oh, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> all right. Um, I saw a good one I liked. Oh, friend of the stream, Jahuli says, are we getting that Clint karaoke on the stream tonight? <laughs> Oh yeah, no. She she not. saw my Instagram post with you. Uh, side singing. sidebar on that. So Kajuski, you're a karaoke man, no, huh? Not. Yeah, but you're gonna come with us, right? We're gonna party. We have a good time. Ooh, well, uh, I don't really party, but yeah, sure. Let's do it. <laughs> you can have a beer and hang out with some local chums. Sure. Yeah, <laughs> look at that. That is confirmed. We're gonna live stream it. We're gonna sell tickets. I think uh, Tati said she's gonna bring drinks for that one. She said she's bringing tequila. Oh yeah. oh ooh. Logan Jones says Tim Locastro or we don't win this World Series. Logan Logan wants a shirt or something. Come on, Logan. (laughs) He knows the way to my heart. Hey, speaking of shirts, guys, uh, it's probably too late in the stream to be telling you about it, but we got an all new shop up now. Um, Includes that that lovely friend of the show shirt. It's finally available to everybody, to the general public. General public. but they're they're super comfy shirts. I think we could roll the beautiful bean footage while while I'm uh, playing it. But yeah, there's pillows, there's cups, blankets, uh, beach towels, and pajama soft shirts. So check it out, DodgersNation.com/shop. Uh, that is DodgersNation.com/shop for the freshest new swag and use that promo code. You've seen it here in the stream, uh, BH Live twenty. You get twenty percent off. That uh, that's a good deal. I do like money. Because 20% off is less than full price. That is. And Rick numbers. has one of those fine shirts, but he has one of the throwback shirts. He doesn't have that fancy pajama sh- uh, soft shirt, but he has the one with the most love because he earned that friend of the show shirt. <laughs> Mine's rough. <laughs> Blame his head. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, so um, Queso's delici- uh, delicious. Yeah. Offensive defenders. So AJ Pollock is back, mm-hmm. and he's hitting. He's doing what I think everybody hoped would happen when he signed the four-year deal. Got hurt. <laughs> Got hurt. Uh, he displaced Alex Verdugo, who's been ex- uh, exceptional in center fielder uh, in center field. Um, while Pollock is now hitting, it seems like maybe he might not be keeping in the same vein, putting the Dodgers in the best position to to win a ball game every single day by playing him in center field. Numbers? Do you have anything that 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 proves my point of? Uh, it's a pretty small sample size, but I don't know if I have anything to prove it. I mean, the, he just seems slow. He seems. It's, I mean, he, he sat for how many months? I mean, it's got to get back in playing shape. But right, like, at the end of the day, I mean, Verdugo perhaps is a better option in center field, but his versatility means that you can put him in left. Yeah, I don't think true. Pollock would yeah. be as good if you put him in left field. So you have to put him in center field. So. I don't think there's an option where outside of benching Pollock, who you just said is hitting and is the guy that they signed and are paying a lot of money to be in that spot. I don't think there's an option out there where, I don't know. I, 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 like, I always say it, it, the guys who are the most versatile are the ones like Ross Stripling. Like, it sucks that he gets bounced back and forth, but because he can and he's yep. so successful doing it, he makes himself a candidate to do that. So um, it's an unfortunate reality for Verdugo, but I think he's, I mean, he continues to hit, and he went from a guy who we didn't know that would play every day to now he has to play every day. Yeah. So. You got- well, we always, I mean, we kind of knew that in-house that Verdugo needed to play every day and all that kind of stuff. And, and he, you know, we're, we're already seeing him sit way too much. But uh, in terms of uh, Pollock, too, he's, <clears throat> he's played nine games in left field in his career. So yeah. he's just not, that's just not his spot. That's not where he plays. He's played even less games in right field. So Doesn't mean the, the do ultimate goal is for him to get his bat in the lineup. And obviously this series, it made sense for him to be in the lineup. Look what he did. You hope that's kind of what he's going to be doing. I mean, we, My phone we, recognized theory. We see, we see Pollock. You know, I think uh, you, you had the beautiful bean footage on the video side. It's just he's kind of slow on the first day. Um, granted, yes, a lot of that could be attributed to the fact that he is still making his way back from a long layoff. But we were talking earlier, too. You know, uh, he didn't help him in that, uh, in that latest blown uh, blown lead, blown save, all that stuff. Uh, Kenley didn't help Kenley, and how we haven't talked about that um, is probably because Rick is here and <laughs> he has friends at the stadium, so we don't want to get you in trouble. But um, yeah, it's just uh, it, it's going to be the best if uh, we see Verdugo in center field full time. It's it's something to keep an eye on, but 
again, this is kind of like a potentially a little bit spoiled thing, but the Dodgers have the second best defensive efficiency in Major League Baseball, tops in the NL. So, and that hasn't, I, I honestly looked because I was like, oh, Jock hasn't been all that great at first base. And right. it, it hasn't gone down a bit. It's actually gone up since he's gone over there. So, in spite of some of these moves or some of these changes where you're like, oh, well, we, we lost a defender in center field, we lost a defender at first base, they're still playing exceptional defense mm-hmm. this season. And, and it got a little sloppy in, in Philadelphia, got a little sloppy in, in Boston, right. and that's not great. But um, compared to the rest of the league, I think it's, it's another thing where it's like your errors or your misplays are amplified because they just don't happen that often. That's true. Yeah. Plus, the, those are two – well, Philly's not supposed to be a tough ballpark to play in, but yeah. the fact that it was like sopping wet the yeah. entire time they were there doesn't help. But Boston's a very tough park yep. to play in if you're not – from Boston, I guess. Yeah, that makes agreed. the most sense. I mean, that's like a weird freaking – all those weird jets and corners we saw in the World Series. There was actually a pop-up to uh, Muncie at first base that, like, gave me flashbacks of the first <laughs> game in Boston last year when they just missed a pop-up. And he ran it down. So I was like, that's it. We're winning the World Series this year. Now it's confirmed. <sighs> T, I know, I know some of the questions that are kind of plugged into the, the, the board here are probably a little bit older, but we <laughs> still want them. Okay, cool. Um. <laughs> okay, good. Okay, so Janae, friend of the stream, said, Hi, "Do you think we should bring up a third catcher?" Which, well, I mean, here's here's the deal: everybody wants Will Smith back, and that's guaranteed. He's coming. It's just a matter of when. The crowd goes wild. There's no arguments against that. There isn't a soul <laughs> on earth that doesn't want Will Smith up. The question is, you're at a weird spot with Russell Martin and Austin Barnes because offensively. Uh, what do you call that? A bloodbath? A, uh, it's not good. <laughs> it's not in a good spot. Austin Barnes looks like Our Mark gets he's on trying base. to hit home runs every time. Martin does get on base. He doesn't really swing, but he gets on base. And, you know, it is what it is. Historically, you didn't expect that much offense out of your catcher. That was kind of the deal. Like, you play that many games behind the plate for that long, you don't expect a lot of offense out of a guy. It's a different game now to where you expect everybody on your roster to hit with the exception of your pitcher. And even some of those cases, the pitchers do hit very well. You got to really weigh what it's worth to you to have those guys up on your roster. You know, Martin Russ is a veteran. He handles the staff very well. Austin is a very good defender, handles the staff very well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, he, he put Kenley in his place a little bit. And that's not something you really expect from Austin, but he did. So you're going to have Will Smith up eventually, but there's going to be a need created for that. And that's going to be decided later on in the year. It's not going to be decided this month. It's probably not going to be decided next month, but towards the end of the year, we'll have more clarity on it. I had said, I don't think Russell Martin makes it through a whole season. I just don't think he's built for it. Not that I hate him. I love him. He's probably one of my all time favorite catchers, but he's old man. Age catches up on you, especially when you're a catcher. Speaks from experience. He's not like actually old, you know. In yeah, terms in terms of, of like human the grand, life, yeah. the grand scheme of life. Yeah. yeah, I, I, I just I can't. Yes, I feel good about the idea of three catchers because that would be another right-handed bat. I was pretty surprised that Will Smith didn't get the call up when CT went down, and and Beatty, who uh, we got to talk about Matt Beatty by the way because I think he's at a point where he can't not be in this lineup or on this roster. Um, but you have versatility with both Smith and Barnes and even, you know, Russell Martin. Uh, the three catchers make sense for this team. Dave Roberts manages better having three catchers. He feels more comfortable. I like it. It's just not – it's not the norm, no. It's not a baseball okay yet. But um, – That's why you don't like it. <laughs> who's, who's your starting guy, man? My starting catcher? Yeah. Putting you on the spot. Right now, Austin Barnes. <laughs> when Ryu starts, probably uh, Russell Martin. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, that's not, I, I thought your answer was perfect. I think we'll see him at some point. I don't think it'll be any time, barring an injury. I mean, right. who knows what can happen. Right. But I don't think it'll be as, as soon as most fans would want. And <clears throat> I understand that frustration. Um, it's tough to see the, the box scores and see, wow, this guy's tearing it up. And our mm-hmm. guy at the major league level isn't. But for the reasons you spoke of, they, they handle the pitchers very well. They hit eighth in the lineup. I'm not expecting a 20 home run guy eighth in the lineup. So... Um, it's just sometimes when people get really frustrated with them, I'm like, it's funny that last year everyone hated he has money grand all because he hit, but he couldn't catch. Yeah. And now you have a guy who can catch, but can't hit. And that's the worst thing in the world to you. So, I mean, there's not too many guys that hit 265, 270, 25 home runs and have, 
you know, all the best catching metrics in the world. So I, I think you want somebody that maybe doesn't exist. And Will Smith right now seems like that guy that you really want, but he's doing it in Oklahoma City and in a very small sample size here. So I'm not saying he won't be the next Hall of Fame catcher when he gets brought up. I just, I don't know. I think the idea of Will Smith right now may be a little bit bigger than what he actually is. What else you got, T? Uh, <laughs> Threw you off. <laughs> yeah. Frank, no last name, said, name a dark horse September. Yeah, name a dark horse September call up who can contribute down the stretch. I'm going to let you take that, bro. Yeah, I think we talked about it last week a little bit, but I still think Gavin Lux is going to end up being that guy. I think he's going to make that, you know, he's going to be that September guy that Corey was uh, mm-hmm. 2015. Yep. Man, that seems like yesterday. Yeah. But I think he's going to be that guy. I think he's going to be very productive in his September, enough to the point where it could. Uh, you know, he could crack that roster. It's possible. It's very well possible. And we're going to have a very left-handed heavy uh, starting lineup. Back to the coming. left-handed heavy lineup. Yep. Back again. That's, the trouble. that's, been, that's kind of my, my expert opinion on it. I think Gavin Lux really would be up already if he was a right-handed batter. Right. They would it find a sense, way yeah. to play his bat if he was a right-handed batter, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> all right. So we have to get into some of the fun stuff. We've been kind of mostly somewhat negative. It tends to happen after a loss, but... Rick, how like you as a numbers guy? How much fun is this Yelly versus Belly MVP bloodbath? I mean, it's <laughs> it's like ridiculous. The other day I tweeted something out like I think Bellinger hit number thirty four, and I just jokingly said your move Yelich, and within two hours he hit a grand slam, yep. and then a home run the next day to, to tie Bellinger. So it's like <laughs> they're literally just one upping each other. I remember earlier in the year when Bellinger robbed a Yelich home run when he when Yelich was leading the league in home runs and then hit one later in the game. It's like right. these guys literally are just matching each other shot for shot. That's why mm-hmm. that commercial yeah. that they made was awesome because it's yeah. literally what they've been doing yeah. all mm-hmm. season is, hey, you can do this. Oh, yeah, I can do this. Yeah. So um, numbers-wise, I mean, Bellinger is going for the triple crown, and he may not win MVP. Think about that for a second. <sighs> That's amazing. <laughs> they're, they're like, their splits are almost identical. I love that. I mean, Yelich hasn't played yet today, but Bellinger has them by two points in batting average. Yelich has him by two points in on base and by 18 points in slugging. They have the same amount of home runs. Bellinger has like five more RBIs. Like it's ridiculous how close they are together. Um, and like it's a realistic scenario that one of these guys could hit 320, 50 home runs, drive in 120, and score 120 runs and not win the MVP. Wow. It's only happened 12 times in Major League history. <laughs> one of them could do it and not win the MVP. That's weird. What a weird year. That's fun. What a weird year. I love watching it. This is great it. for it's like It's like Sammy and uh, Mark it's a, McGuire. Yeah, it's a clean again, version dude. of 98 yeah, or 97. Or 2001 version. was actually the last time it happened, and Sammy was one of them. Yeah, yeah, there you go. See? It matches up perfectly. Sammy and Bonds in the same year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, Imagine people that. were watching every one of those games that they played in, like, leading up to the end of the season. And I think, really, this is, like, the same scenario. When you see one of them hit a home run, you almost, like, switch over to the other game, like, does he have any home runs today? Has yeah. he hit anything? Has he done anything? What's going on? I think the real difference, the real difference maker is going to be the uh, – at home versus away stats because <laughs> historically Yelich doesn't do great away from his home ballpark and uh, you do have to play some away from uh, Milwaukee so we'll see how that goes down the stretch. Um, Janae says uh, he that Belly won the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> I'm down. I still think Belly won the commercial, though. Uh, Logan Jones says Bellinger and Yelich are like Magic Johnson and Larry Bird. Ooh, hot take. What do you think, Gary? Is that a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Which he one's said, Larry Bird? <laughs> <laughs> Which one's Larry? I know, right? Um, it's White Magic Johnson, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. That but this up. is just, it's incredibly fun to watch in baseball. And again, it, it's its nice to see it done the, the right way. Um, although, I mean, the other time it was really fun, too. Sure. Yeah. Let's bash, if you will. Let's bash. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do know, though, that Bellinger has the inside edge because, he? because he invented. Well, he didn't invent it. He he became a, a co-ed or it's like a slow pitch softball player. He went with the belly colada, which is a couple of Red Bulls and, and Advil yeah. or ibuprofen or whatever. I can guarantee you that sixty three percent of the time it works every time. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. That sixty three percent of the time it works every time. Um, <laughs> Jehuli says that commercial wasn't fair. Pete Davidson is an actor. I see solid. what you did there. Ooh, yeah, I see what you did there. Good one. I All like right. that. <laughs> All right, I, we have uh, some more fun, Rick. I feel like the last, you know, obviously you're a friend of the show. We, we love cool. having you here. Um, and I, this isn't me pulling you into the manager's office to trade you for Amir Garrett. No, we do, I feel like we, we I, I don't do, I, I do a disservice to the audience in not fully utilizing you in the inside there, which phrasing, 
But I don't know where this is going. But. Highlights, man. We want some first highlight half oh, yeah. highlights. You're there at the ballpark. You see as many of them as you can. You see every Dodger game, but most importantly, or less importantly, or equally importantly, you're there with Joe and Oral right behind him. You get you get the the inside scoop of what happens when he hits the talk back button or whatever it is. What what it's uh, just numbers wise, whatever you got in your head is some highlights. We want to know about your first half of the season. Okay, I, I wrote down a few. Um, I mean, from a baseball perspective. <laughs> I mean, start opening day, eight home runs, <laughs> franchise record, MLB record for opening day. Like, you're sitting there, and we're watching, like, home run after home run after home run. And the guys are turning around being like, I think we wiped the best scene in history of <laughs> <Right>. baseball. <laughs> <laughs> opening like, day. It is incredible. Yeah. Um, I mean, so that's obviously a highlight. The five straight walk-offs, I mean, that will speak for themselves. It By, like, game four, it was almost like – I think after the, the fourth one happened, because there was the road trip in between. Right. Going to game five, we, I mean, we're – talking about the game joking like all right joe what call you got today who's it gonna be like uh-huh. you yeah, know what, what rookie's gonna step up oh, was it will smith like, like it's unbelievable that these guys were doing it that routinely i think it yep. was like seven walk-offs in like 19 or 20 home games over a span so like <laughs> it's just ridiculous uh the fourth one specifically the, all the walks i think that was the loudest in the two years that i've been here i've ever heard dodger stadium i mean the opposing pitcher Derek or not Derek holland uh greg holland was like shaking on the mound like he that was, 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 I like I felt uncomfortable for him just because it, like, <laughs> it was like, man, I can't even fathom being in this situation. So like, like that really got him. Um, I mentioned the yellow or yellow dropped home run by Bellinger. Um, some of the plays he's made, kind of the guy down uh, was it Carlos Gomez at third in that same yeah. game. It was the second second guy he'd thrown out. <laughs> he had a home run that game. Like it was unbelievable. <laughs> My personal favorite, uh, I think it was May seventh, Ryu. Flirting with the no hitter, he ended up throwing a Maddox, you know, under 100 pitches. Is that game shutout. The Mother's Day one, I believe. No, that was just a regular oh, week night. No. Oh, uh, but Turner had three home runs that day. It was like, oh, it, it was yeah. like the perfect game. Yeah, I, like I still like have fond memories just thinking back the, on that day. I think the only thing that would have made it better for you is if Ryu had the home runs. That would have been, I mean, could you imagine <laughs> oh, three <laughs> Ryu bombs? Yeah. Oh my gosh, um, it's coming! It's coming! I know somebody who has to get a Ryu tattoo when he goes deep this year. Oh so. baby, yeah. it's not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. We're gonna get him. You can match. We're gonna get him lit and go get him tattooed. <laughs> uh, just from like a personal perspective, I think there's just stuff that happens every day where I'm just like, I don't know. Like you said, like they hit the cough back button and they say something funny, or I, I don't know why this one is in green, but there was a day where like it was the first inning still, and Joe and Oral were talking about like the dial-up internet sound, and like they're literally going to each other like ear, like, and, and I'm like, it's the first inning. <laughs> you gotta be kidding. Like, just stuff like that happens every day, and I'm just like, I can't believe that this is like this is my job. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the the mail that those guys get, and I mean, you guys have seen the one we posted of like, yeah, old picture, old like picture. stuff like some of the stuff that they get from like foreign countries, and some of the gifts that people send. Like it's so generous and thoughtful, but it's like also like some of it is so random where you open it up, you're like, what's this gonna be? Mm-hmm. So I just think like it's really unique. Um, just kind of seeing that every day. And then for me personally in Boston, actually, I guess it's not the first half, but in Boston, there was a point typically when an opposing team comes in or when teams play each other, like the announcers will sit down and be like, all right, tell me about your team or tell me about this guy. Right. And Eckersley, who's like Dennis Eckersley, Hall of Famer, yeah. came in to talk to Oral and he's like, tell me about your guys. And I was kind of sitting above them, just kind of doing my work. And Oral goes, well, this is the guy you need to talk to. And so at that point, both of those guys are looking up at me <laughs> And I'm like telling them about the Dodgers, and I'm that's like, "That's got to be crazy." How did I get in this position where I'm now talking to like a Hall of Famer and someone who should be in the Hall of Fame about the two teams that are about to play, and they're listening to me like I know what I'm talking about right. when like they know they've forgot more about baseball. I it's just one of those ones where I'm like, "What? Yeah. How is this? How am I here? Pinch like, me? Where's the camera? Yeah, what is this? <laughs> when am I gonna get punked? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ashton Kutcher's coming out of somewhere." Uh, that's that. That's one of the funny things too is how I set it up. It's like you get to live your life working with, with some of your best buds. You know the Booth Boys. Still got to make that shirt, by the booth way. Boys? Rick and the Booth Boys. That's got to be an off-season podcast. We'll happily host it for you guys. Sweet. Everybody lives down the street, pretty you much. Can hang so out and we'll... make dial-up noises at each other. <laughs> <laughs> like it doesn't even need to be riveting content because no. everything they do is is just gold. Everybody will watch that. Yeah. Everybody. I yeah, know. I'll sit we're, at home and watch that. I don't care. We're just gonna follow them and and like go stock their their thing. We're gonna be your plus two to uh, uh, um, a Davis uh, barbecue this off season. Okay, sweet. We'll allow it. It'll that's, be called. That's I get invited. It'll be called. <laughs> it'll be a TV series called Outside the Booth. That's what we'll call it. There you go. What would you say in in now your uh, like you were saying you know two plus years of, of being around it and and being around uh, Bulldog? What, what's your favorite oralism? That's what I'm gonna call them. You can use that if you want, by the way, oral. The thing about oral is that he doesn't, like, repeat 
stuff. You know what I mean? So like, I don't know. I, I watched some Red Sox games and like, I would say it was around Eckersley and he like uses the same like pair of shoes or high <clears throat> cheese and stuff like that. Where like he uses the same expressions and they're ah, like endearing. Yeah, Whereas yeah, like yeah. oral, it's like, it's not necessarily an oralism. It's just like a story that he goes on where I'm mm-hmm. like, where is this going? <laughs> and like, it always has a purpose and it's always a great story. And I'm always just like, wow, okay, that made sense. But like when it starts, I'm like, all right, like I'm going to go on this journey with you. I hope, it ends, I, I hope it ends up okay. Um, so I don't know if I have a specific one. It's just like, there's some times where like he's talking and like he'll literally, cause him and Joe look at each other. He'll like glance up at me and I'm just looking at him like, <laughs> the, I think those are the ones people want the most. That's yeah. what people would pay to see. They're like, what's this guy talking about? The, the one I like distinctly remember the most. And it wasn't like an oralism. It was just like, I, do you remember like the food fest ad read that he had to do? Oh God. And like uh, the pulled pork yeah. pierogi pulled hoagie. Pork, pierogi hoagie. And like, I mean, he'd done it like a hundred times and like, it's not an easy thing to say. And like, there's other stuff that are like tough to say in there too. And at one point he said something and I just started laughing and he looks up at me and he just starts laughing to the point where like, and then he starts talking again and then he starts cracking <laughs> up again. And probably Joe had to cut in and finish the ad read. And he just, and he's like, Oh yes. And he goes like, you guys. And I'm like, you're Oh, like they don't see me. So like, they just think <laughs> you're just talking. So it was like this whole just thing. Himself. And I was like, I really wish I'd captured that moment. Cause it was like so ridiculous. <laughs> we should just set up a GoPro in there. Yeah. I don't think that would go over too well. I mean, they don't have to know. You just tell. Now we got I mean, some privacy laws. Sure. Right? Yeah. Yeah, you got the express written consent of me. Uh, yeah. A friend of the show, Gail said, how great was oral on today's YouTube game? We we're actually talking about that before we started the stream that, uh, without Oral on that broadcast, I think everyone in America would have muted that broadcast. Uh, Oral definitely saved it. He did a great job. He made it riveting. He brought his own flair to it. Mm-hmm. He made people want to pay attention to it, and he made people actually enjoy it. Yeah, and it I was mean, really interesting to watch him interact with you know new people, as yeah. it were. You know, not the same people that he always interacts with, but you <clears> definitely <throat> really got to see his character come out and knowing that he is really good at what he does, which was awesome to see um, on a national stage. Yeah, like I mean, that, I, for sure. some, you know, some people probably remember him doing the ESPN cast before sports in LA and he was great. I, mean, I remember being, you know, floored when like they announced, Oh, here's this new channel. Here's this new team. Holy shit. That's oral Hershiser. <laughs> Hell yeah. We got bulldog right back that, that, and you know, he's, he's uh, yet to, to let us down. I just want him to start getting like, you know, this, it's gonna. We're gonna be up like eighteen games. He's gonna be like, yeah, I don't care. Never. No, I. I the consummate I, professional. I tweeted about it, but like, <clears throat> it was kind of a throwaway line by the. I can't remember the name of the other analyst today, but just talking about how like Joe Kelly is a, you know, a skinnier guy and how yeah. he throws so hard and he does it pretty often and and sometimes like I, I'm not an expert on like physics and all that kind of stuff, so he could be totally wrong. He could be making all this stuff up, and I would have no idea. But like the way Oral is able to break down like the human body and physics and how all of pitching works and the stuff that he's read and the research that he's done to know what he does mm-hmm. and the way he can portray it to people in a way that's actually pretty easy to understand is remarkable to me. And it's something that I think a lot of people take for granted. And uh-huh. um, I don't think a lot of other broadcasts, whether it be national or even local is, is really brought. Um, and I just think it's an extra layer to kind of what the Dodgers can do with Joe right. with his stories and, right. and just, I think they're overall just great as a team, but then kind of bring it to the next level of, okay, this is happening and this is why this is happening that, you know, I, I don't think people should take for granted. Yeah, well, to touch on them, great as a team. You know, that was one of the the, the first times we we talked to to Joe. Just you know, him being him being appreciative of the fact of how appreciative we all are that you know it's a real friendship between them, and it comes across in the broadcast. You're just hanging out with friends. You're inviting them into your bedroom awkwardly to tell us a story about what's going on with the game, and and it's and it's so much fun. And um, you know, a lot of people don't might not know all of. Bulldog has done everything in his career, you know, from coming up with, with the Dodgers, from playing under Tommy Lasorda to, to falling apart, to going to, to Cleveland, to being a horse for them, to not, not really helping their World Series chances to, you know, somehow being on the last sliver of his career and, and you know, still pulling some magic out of his ass in, in what was it, the championship series or whatever for the Mets, like a gutty performance. And then dude's been a, a coach. He's been a, a major league bullpen or, or, you know, pitching coach. He's done a little bit of front office stuff. Like he mentioned today, he's, he's, he's been a professional ish poker player. Um, that's the most important one. Work, yeah. Worked for ESPN and now working uh, for the best team in baseball, the, the big leagues and the Dodgers, and, and we're, we're really just like – we're blessed to have him, and you're blessed to be able to call him one of your best friends, man. That's 
could have put it any better. Yeah, I mean, it's professional. You guys can uh, you guys can cut that and put that somewhere out on the internet. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you guys talk about like us being spoiled, like in terms of our team and yeah. our wins and everything like that. To go from Vince Scully from so yeah. for so long and to have that for There's so long, that in itself was amazing. But then you go from that to you expect like a big drop off with whoever comes in next. And mm-hmm. I always felt bad when I, the, the whole year when they were talking about him retiring, I didn't know Joe very well. And I didn't, yeah, you know, I didn't hear a lot of his stuff, mm-hmm. but I was always like, man, that's tough. Like that's tough to follow up. And he, and Joe followed up and delivered so well and immediately brought in fan, like the fan base to mm-hmm. love him and adore him. And to have like your whole team built up like that is just, I mean, how spoiled are we? I mean, it's L.A., you know. We, it, comes with, it comes with some perks. Best the coast, best coast, baby. Yeah, <laughs> so I get it, but really, what a team. Top to bottom, the whole organization. Yep, talking about uh, one of Beloit's finest with another one over here. <laughs> hey, man, we saw the awards. Don't, I mean. Saw the awards. Just stop. I, I already feel uncomfortable. I don't <laughs> You know, speaking of making uh, Rick feel uncomfortable, so we, all of us, enjoyed your trip back home on social oh, media. No. That was so good, dude. It was so good. <laughs> you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of your, your time back home with the family? Uh, sure. I mean, it was pretty brief. It was only a couple of days, but... Mm-hmm. Seems like you packed a lot into those couple of days. I got to see my family and my sister and sister-in-law and my nieces, which mm-hmm. was good. I mean, my nieces don't care the slightest a bit about me which is like <laughs> really unfortunate but it's okay they're young yeah. they'll figure it out but um yeah it was good to see them i mean i, I don't get to see them that often so that's good and then um <clears throat> the kid who lives in my condo right now was actually out of town so i didn't get to see him at all but uh, i hung out with my best friend mike while i was in town saw him and his baby so that was cool nice his like physically not like his his wife and their baby whatever um <laughs> his baby Hang know, with freezing was weird um <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. you called your friend's wife's baby because that's what they call him. I think that's what we're going with. Sure. Yeah. Yes. And then, uh, hey, baby. I pretty much committed. I said I, I don't really get to see the outside that often, sadly, in LA where it's really sunny. So I was like, I'm just going to like lay out and I'm going to tan this entire time I'm home. And that was the plan. <laughs> and like three hours into the first day, I was like, I know, because I've never applied sunscreen very well. <laughs> I was like, I know I did a poor job with this. And I came inside and it's like, you can see the fingerprints of like where I actually, so I was like, this just sucks. Yeah. It's not, you're not supposed yeah. to blot. You're supposed but, to yeah. apply. Well, the good blot. news is like, I get like, I burn for like a day and then it turns into tan, which is fine. Like probably not oh, good long good. term, but lucky, yeah. but mine, like mine peels right off. Yeah. I was just like, well, I can't do, do this mean? tomorrow. So it's, yeah. yeah. And I basically was like, I, I know what I'm destined to do. I'm just going to sit inside and work on Red Sox notes. So that's what I did for the next series. <laughs> But yeah, it was a good, good couple of days, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we again, we we definitely enjoyed those. And anytime we get to see, uh, you know, some of anytime the internet gets to see some more of, of the the fun Rick personality, I think everybody enjoys it. So it's per- again, I, I don't like to call it fun, but it's per- it's personality. We fi- again, we find it fun. So you oh, got to do it for Sweet. the people. Yeah. I'll do it for the people. Yeah. yeah, do it for the fans. Do it for that guy right there and that girl right there. Just in that camera, you you stare deeply into their soul and be like, "This tweet's for you." Maybe a lot of people just like DM me like, please stop. Please, please <laughs> stop staring into my soul. No, just like stop with the updates. <laughs> the, yeah, the day we get a, uh, a a Rick selfie, I think that's going to be the day the internet explodes. Careful. Rightfully so? I don't yeah. know what's going to happen. Careful. Sorry. <laughs> Careful. Anyways, um, I think I think that just about wraps it up. We've been having some fun. I think talking about Rick's tan is a good way to wrap it up. Yeah, yeah everybody imagine that. Imagine Rick's tan. <laughs> Look at him. And look at tan. Think of blotched. <laughs> Think of blotched. Think of the fingerprints on the, the arms. Fingerprints. <laughs> I hate <Yeah>. this. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Everybody's gone by now. No, they're not. You guys can find us on the internet at DodgersNation.com. That's a website. Subscribe to Blue Heaven on iTunes. I, sorry, that was good. I was happy with that one. Subscribe to Blue Heaven on iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, Stitcher Radio, Player FM. Oh, so many. Oh, so many more. Thank you to our guest, Rick Krajewski. That's at Rick underscore K21 for uh, fans of the Twitter. Mm-hmm. Is that your Instagram handle, too? No, what, what, no, what, do, what do you have? Rick what do you have? On, that's uh, my full name. It's not ideal. Oh. <laughs> no one knows how to spell that. <laughs> Correct. Just go to his Twitter, and then you can find everything else I mean, from other there. influencers like Khloe Kardashian, it's their full name, too, Rick Krajewski. You're I, you don't, don't use the I'm, influencer. An, yeah. influencer. I'm going with influencer. I'm driving that home. Uh, Guys, uh, send him stuff. He's an influencer. He's an influencer. <laughs> I am at Brooke Me Three. This guy over here is at Real FRG. We are both on Twitter and Instagram under that, and we are at Dodgers Nation on Twitter at Official Dodgers Nation on the IG. Huge thank you to our crack production team in house, Miss Tammy T, Mr. Gary Lee. Oh, that rhymed. That was so wow. good. And Hillary. <laughs> 
Perez, <laughs> per, by the way, Perez is upset you haven't slandered Miami. Go oh, real quick. Uh, we just want to thank you guys all for your questions and comments, and we will see you next Thursday. I hate you, Miami. Bye.